everybody welcome back this is savannah and in today's video we're going to take a little bit more of a serious aspect on things um we're going to talk about sexual harassment and sexual assault so this is like so awkward i've been wanting to make this video for a really long time because i think this is something that needs to be known and i hope that the people that i talk about in this video end up watching this because the way that some of the things were handled that I'm about to talk about are honestly very disappointing, um, especially because some of the leadership roles of the people that handled this these situations with me, um, they didn't handle them properly and it sort of makes me wonder because like they have kids, they have daughters. So I'm just curious as to what they would do if you know, the roles were reversed or switched and something like this that happened to me happened to their daughter. Like, would they handle it the same way? Would they want, you know, people doing that to their daughter? You know, like, if you have a daughter, how do you just go around sexually harassing people just because, I don't know. So we're gonna jump right into the video and I'm gonna talk about a select few things that happened to me while I was in the military. And I want to urge you that if you're in the military or if you're in a workplace or honestly anywhere, if you're a male, if you're a female, whatever, if someone is sexually harassing you or sexually assaulting you, you need to tell somebody because if you don't tell anybody, they're just gonna keep doing what they're doing and they're not gonna get caught. And they're like, you know, there's gonna be other people. It's not gonna be just you. So you need to go through the proper chains and you need to like tell somebody and talk about it because that shit's not cool and it's not okay. So I have a little list here. I'm just gonna essentially go down the list because um, I wrote down just a couple things that I remember happening to me. So the fr I'm not gonna mention any names, but I just wanna say that this first individual that I'm gonna talk about was weird from day one. The very first day that I met this person, they were extremely weird. They, like I was the new private, like people make memes about this shit. I was the new private in the military at the unit and he wanted to be the person to introduce himself to me first. He was married at the time, he has a daughter and pretty much he would always just like, when a soldier is in processing, they don't need a chaperone. They usually assign someone of either like the same rank or someone higher than them, I guess, like just a little bit higher than them, you know, to show them where they need to go and you know they give them their in processing paperwork in processing paperwork and then they like let them go on their way and do what they need to do that wasn't the case with me i had someone who was four ranks higher than me at the time um following me around and not because i asked them to or not because they were told to do it just because they wanted to i guess um it was really weird because my car wasn't at the unit yet so every time i would have to go anywhere this person would put me in their car and they would drive me around places. Um, and as time went on and we got to know each other a little bit better and I got to make more friends at the unit and everything, this person would always say really weird shit to me like, hey, like I saw you on Tinder, like just to see what I would say. Um, and at that point I was married, I wasn't on Tinder. So that's like, n like picking, like, you know, fishing, seeing if he could get me to say something like, oh no, I'm in a contract marriage. Like, no bud. He also would say things like, you know, we would get in so much trouble if we hung out outside of work. Like, we're not gonna do that, pal. Like, I don't, I, I don't even know why you would think that would work on anybody. Like, is that like a line you use? to pick up girls or like, what, it, what else would you expect me to say? Like, oh no, we should totally hang out. No, no, nope, not gonna happen. The, one of the final straws was when, one of them, one of the final straws was when this person came up to me and uh, so I had, fast forward, I had gotten a divorce. I had gotten separated for a year and then I got a divorce. So I was at the unit for a while and I knew everybody, I knew this person very well, I knew you know everybody at the unit very well. And this person pulled me into his office and he covered up his rank and he said, hey, I just wanna to talk to you like person to person really quick um, because I've been hearing some things. And I was like, 
okay, like, what is it? And he was like, you need to stop fucking people in the barracks. And I was so shocked because first of all, I had not had sex with anybody, especially in the barracks. Second of all, I had just gotten separated and divorced by someone that I was married to and you know together with for six years. So I had just gotten out of a six year relationship. Do you really think I wanna just go out and start fucking people in the barracks? No, not at all. Like that's the last thing on my mind. I was now a single soldier. I was a specialist at the time and I wanted to go to the barracks because that's where all of my friends were. And if you're in the military, even if you're not in the military, Everybody goes to the barracks on the weekends, like to party, to drink, whatever, because nine times out of 10, everybody's already there and everybody's already drinking. So that's where I went. All of my friends were single soldiers that lived in the barracks. That's literally why I was there. So for someone to just like come at me so sideways without knowing any information about me or my situation, or especially like an NCO trying to like get into my sex life like that, it really caught me off guard and there was so many other inappropriate things that have been said to me by this certain individual so many times before that that I like that was like my last straw I was like we're not like we're not doing this like friendly thing anymore if you're not gonna be completely professional I don't want to fucking hear it so that shit pissed me off and I walked out of the office well later on that day <laughs> this is where it gets ridiculous later on that day I was trying to do a leave form and this individual comes up to me because I was at the printer, I was printing out my leave form. He comes up to me, touches my butt, and then shows me my leave form and tells me that I have a mistake on it. So I turn around and I was like, like, did you just touch my butt? And he's like, oh yeah, I just wanna like show you something, there's something wrong with your leave form. And I was like, thinking like, so you, you touch my butt, like you touch my butt to get my attention? First of all, don't touch me at all. Second of all, what? Like, you're a grown ass man, you're married, you have a pregnant wife right now. Like, everybody thought it was like a contract marriage and it wasn't. Like, you have a pregnant wife right now and you're at work touching your own soldier's butt. Like, you were my platoon sergeant. What is up with that? So I take the day because that was like the final straw, like don't lay your hands on me, that was just ridiculous. I take the day to kind of calm down, think about it, and think about if I'm gonna report this or not, because I'm the type of person that I'm, like it's really hard to offend me, believe me. I worked with only men for a very long time, like I am, I probably have like one of, I have the thickest skin of almost anybody that I know, so, I was like, I don't want to ruin anybody's career. Like that might've been just a mistake. And then I started thinking like, so many other female soldiers have come up to me and talked to me about this specific individual. I'm saying something like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't care anymore about this dude's life, his career, nothing. Like he's doing this not only to me, he's doing it to other people. He's making all of the other females in the unit, well, most of the other females in the unit, especially in our platoon, feel very uncomfortable. So like, and he had already been under events investigation for like, equal opportunity complaints. He had another um, sharp complaint, I wanna say. You know, he had all sorts of stuff. He would call the homosexual soldiers that we had um, the F word straight to their face. Like, this person was just a disgusting person. So, this is where it gets ridiculous. I went, the pro I went through the proper chains. I talked to my peers first, my friends. I said, hey, this is what happened. What do you think I should do? They told me I should light his ass up because fuck him. <laughs> uh, then I talked to my team leader. Me and my team leader went to my squad leader. Me and my squad leader went to my, skipped my platoon sergeant because that's who it was. Went to the first sergeant, he wasn't there. But my squad leader was like, if he's not there and you really think this is that serious, we need to go into the commander's office. So he used his open door policy. You could talk to him, explain what happened. And I said, okay, great. So that's what we did. I walk in there. I explain what happens and the first things that come out of this dude's mouth was, okay, that's fine, we'll keep it company level. What? No, no, no. So what if I don't want to? First of all, that's not how that works. If I come, if you go to a commander, like your commander, and you're telling someone that's like outside of your, um, outside of your chain of command, outside of your like, 
sharp, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're going to someone with a sharp complaint that's not in the line of um, like your sharp representatives, your report is unrestricted now. It means that <laughs> like it has to go up the chain now like that's an unrestricted unrestricted report that person has to be investigated now and he said that he's gonna keep it company level my commander was like we'll keep it company level what what if someone okay first of all the dude that grabbed my ass what if someone grabbed your daughter's ass how would you feel about that and as for my commander what if someone grabbed your daughter's ass how would you feel about that like you're supposed to protect me. You're supposed to be the person that <laughs> locks people like this down, but because this dude had a ranger tab and he was good at running, like they're still gonna favor this person. And that's what I hated the most about this unit was that if you were good at PT and if you were a kiss ass, you were up at the top. And I didn't roll like that. I spoke my mind. I fucking tried to do the right thing as much as I possibly could, but People who were just shitty people made it to the top somehow. And that's one of the reasons why I got out of the military, because this is ridiculous. So after all of that happened, fast forward to a year later, this NCO was still doing things like that. This NCO was still making people, fe people feel uncomfortable. He was still, you know, like teeter-tottering on EO and Sharp. So our command and climate survey comes around and this essentially a command and climate survey is a survey that it's anonymous and you can put your name on it if you want to and you pretty it asks you a bunch of questions like have you ever thought about committing suicide you know is there anything going on at your unit that we need to talk about blah 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 so i lit this entire survey up not only not only did i talk about the dude that grabbed my ass i talked about this is probably going to be very shocking for a lot of people. I talked about the dude that grabbed my hand and put it on his dick. I talked about the dude that forcefully kissed me underneath a stairwell. I talked about the dude who whipped his soft dick out in my face and asked for a blowjob at JRTC. I talked about the dude that asked me when we were alone in a military vehicle if he could hold my boobs. I talked about the dude who grabbed my ass and nothing happened for a year who when I reported a sharp complaint it didn't go anywhere I talked about the dude who was married with kids who would walk around the company saying oh yeah I'm separated it's no big deal but then talk about wanting to put his face in my chest I talked about all of these stupid people disgusting people and I lit the survey up, I name dropped, I put my name, I put my rank, I put my phone number, I put my email, I put every possible thing that has, like bad thing that has happened in my company, in my unit, and I wanted them to contact me about it because most people don't do that. And I know for a fact that at least three or four, I wanna say like four other people that I know did the same exact thing. And you know whose name kept popping up? those fucking individuals. Those individuals are the people that kept popping up. And nothing was getting done about these people. Nothing was getting done. No reports were being sent up. So these surveys are viewed, it was a battalion wide. It wasn't a company wide because I put it in the company and nothing, the company wide surveys and nothing ever happened. So these were a battalion wide. So these surveys go straight to your command sergeant major and go straight to your battalion commander. Well, about a week later when my survey was, you know, the one at the top of the stack and they got wind of this, we had a <laughs> emergency and very hasty sharpened EO training. The next day I get a phone call from my first sergeant after I'm already at home. It was like seven o'clock at night saying that I needed to come back in because my command sergeant major wanted to talk to me in person. So me thinking like, f f like what did I do? I'm, I'm probably in trouble or something. Nope, he got wind of my survey and he wanted to talk to me about everything, document everything and make sure that I was being taken care of because the fact that all of that stuff happened a year ago when, that, when the person who I told, I 
told him he didn't send it up the fact that he didn't say anything about it and kept it company level is a violation of everything that being a commander stands for if someone comes to you like i said earlier with a sharp complaint and you're not in a line of like sharp representatives it's unrestricted you now have to tell somebody you have to send it up the chain and that person who's being accused of whatever they're being accused of has to be investigated now so so it took me going directly essentially to my command sergeant major and my battalion commander for anything to be done about this within i want to say two days all of those people were on a no contact order with me they got moved out of the company they got a, like an immediate investigation put on them and then lo and behold as soon as i say something everybody else wants to come out and say something too because they were afraid that their voice wasn't being heard because nobody in my unit was taking shit like this seriously nobody wanted to talk about it nobody wanted to say anything about it the other people who have been victimized essentially by this person also came forward and other people who had been victimized by other people also came forward so now all of a sudden we had i want to say six sharp complaints out of nowhere because of my survey we had three EO complaints and all of this stuff happened in one week. One week's time, these people had complaints against them. They had inv open investigations against them. They had been moved out of our unit and two of them got kicked out of the military. So I just want to let you know that this shit is serious. And if you're one of the people that are going around doing stupid shit like this, literally shame on you. You are the worst scum of the earth person and you need to reevaluate your life. So. Fast forward to about three months after this, the investigations are starting to close because so many people have been, you know, interviewed and everything. They're taking people out of work to come like for hours to be investigated about this stuff um, and interviewed. They're, you know, getting proof. They're getting text messages. They're getting pictures. They're getting all sorts of evidence to give these people Article 15s to kick them out of the military. This shit is serious and it's, it is, serious if your chain of command if your nco support channel if your line of sharp representatives or eo representatives are not taking this shit serious use the open door policy and go talk to someone higher than that because it is absolutely pitiful if you are having the courage to you know have something happen to you and then talk about it and no one wants to take you seriously or they just want to keep a company level because they don't want their command time to look like a shit show when it was a shit show that's bullshit like you need to talk to someone else and i really hope that you do so that is my story i don't feel bad about ruining anybody's career they did it to themselves i don't think that i ruined anybody's career because they would still have a career if they weren't grabbing ass and calling people names that are homophobic. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be in jeopardy of getting kicked out of the military if they weren't doing extremely rapey things to other people. And like I said, this happened from like on way more than one occasion and from way more than just one person. So, and what's even crazier What's even more crazy is shit like this happens to men in the military almost more than it happens to females and no one talks about it because it's emasculating or they're afraid to talk to someone because they don't want to like be made fun of or they don't want to not be taken seriously. Well, it takes that first step to say something to be taken seriously. I let it happen over and over and over again because I was so naive. I didn't want to ruin anyone, anyone's career until I got into that mindset. You're not ruining anybody's career. They're ruining their own career. And if you don't say something, there are going to be more people that it happens to. There are going to be more things that happen. So in order to break that system of this person continuously doing toxic and inappropriate behavior, someone needs to say something to put a wedge in it nip it in the bud fucking do something about it because it's just going to continue if no one says anything so i hope anybody that watched this video 
found any of the information useful. Um, a lot of it is probably very shocking to most of you. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave the video at that. I feel awkward ending this video this way, but as always, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're always notified when I post a new video, and leave me a comment down in the description box about anything involving the topic that I just talked about that you feel comfortable talking about. I will see you guys in the next one.